All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to be here, so instead of me being here, I figure I might as well still teach it and get you guys going and uh, let you hear my monotone voice. I've been told that I sound like I have no emotion when I do this, and uh, for the most part, I think you're probably right. They actually came out with some statistics that showed that people are often, when they do these screencasts, using emotion, but you can't tell it because you can't actually see the person, so much of it's in the nonverbal communication. But I'm already off on a tangent, so let's get you guys focused and ready to do what you're going to be doing for the remainder of the course, or excuse me, for the remainder of the class. All right, so just before we get started, let's do a little bit of review, and then I'll explain the activities we'll be doing for today. So remember, with fingerprint patterns, some of the things we're going to be looking at today, um, you are going to be taking a quiz over some of the finger fingerprint patterns, arches, loops, whirls, and then being able to match some fingerprints. You will be able to use your notes on that quiz, and so this really shouldn't be that big of a deal. It will be an individual quiz, and I'll explain more when we get to the end. And then, so that's what, I guess I have it written here twice, sorry about that. And then I have some additional assignments you'll be working on as well. So just a reminder, uh, we can take the three different distinct patterns, the arches, the whirls, and the loops, and we can further classify them into a total of eight primary patterns that you find in fingerprints. We've looked at arches and identified plain arches, and we've identified tenant arches. Plain arches, you can see here, it just basically looks like a bell-shaped curve whereas a tenant arch has a little bit of a, a, a triangle that forms right in the middle of it, but not enough of a triangle to really be classified as a delta. It's got to be, for it to be classified as a delta, it has to be significant enough to either form a loop or form a whirl. And so in this case, you can see it does not form either one of those, so we cannot technically classify this as being a delta. All right, when we look at loops, remember we talked about the difference between ulnar and radial loops? And we also discussed the fact that the on any loop you're going to find a one delta, and so the loop is a result of the formation of one delta. We talked about the difference between the core and the delta. The core is the very center of the loop or the whirl, whereas the delta is the triangular piece that causes that formation to um, be apparent, whether it's the loop or a whirl. All right, and this thing keeps getting mad at me, uh, and so apologize for that. So going with that as well, you're going to notice ulnar and radial loops. Remember we talked about radial loops being uh, less common and uh, the way you determine which one it is, first you need to know the suspect and you have to identify which hand it came from because a radial loop is always going to point towards the thumb and an ulnar loop is going to point towards the little finger. All right, when we look at whirls, we've looked at four different types of whirls. The, the main whirl that you see is a plane whirl, just basically a bunch of concentric circles that are all centering in on one fixed point. A central pocket whirl is going to have more of an arch shape in other locations and then just have a small portion of the fingerprint that's going to have an actual whirl. All right, remember we also talked about it takes two deltas to be able to form of a whirl pattern. So you can see this has identified these two locations and these two locations as deltas. And it keeps yelling at me some more. All right, and then we also looked at the double loop whirl, and we talked about why the double loop whirl is technically classified as a whirl because of the fact that you find two deltas there. In a double loop whirl, you'll have um, two loops that are formed as a result of two deltas, and we turn around and classify that as a whirl. And then the accidental whirl, which is essentially the hodgepodge for if anything doesn't fit, and if it doesn't fit one of the other seven, we typically classify it as an accidental whirl, and you usually will find at least a very small whirl pattern on those prints. All right, so just as a quick review, remember if it has no deltas, we consider it to be an arch. If it has one delta, we consider it to be a loop. And if it has two deltas, we're going to consider it to be a whirl. That should be able to help you out a little bit when you, when you take your quiz. All right, and then we also spent some time here the last couple days on doing some matching. Remember, we called each of these little locations on the fingerprint, we called it minutia, or we called it a point of comparison. And so you're going to take a print that's been lifted from the crime scene, and you're going to compare it to a print from a known suspect. And you're going to look for the same locations on each fingerprint. And so I don't think I did as good of a job of explaining this the first time as I could have. This spot right here, number one, is showing that this is a spot of minutia from the latent print. Here is from the suspect the exact same location. 
and so we're looking to see is the minutia there the same location two is it the same location three do you have the same feature and you're going through and doing that with all of these remember when you label these you do not ever cross the lines so these lines should always be uh, straight done with a straight edge but they should never intersect and you're going to number them in order and my recommendation is start at twelve o'clock and number in order going clockwise around the around the fingerprint all right, so here's the activities for today. You're going to go through, you're going to take the quiz first. The quiz should be done silently. It should be done individually. Um, and the title of the quiz paper is going to say Activity 6-5. Remember, it is open notes, so you may have your notes out while you're working on this. Activity 6-5 looks like this. You're going to go through and identify what pattern is being shown. So what is being labeled here? by the part that's circled in A. What is being labeled here, being shown here at part B? What's being shown here? All right, you're going to look for the same spots over here. So you're going to go through and you're identifying is the minutiae going to be the same in both locations. All right, so for given the labels of what each of those are showing, you're going to list those here. For the right print, you're going to list those on the right. There's a backside to it. This time what you're going to do is you're going to go through and look at each of these individual's fingerprints. You need to label uh, the points of minutia. Find a location where there's bifurcation, put a number one. Find a location where there's an island, label that with a number two. Find a spot where there's an uh, ending ridge, label that as number three. All right, and then identify the type of print. Is it an arch, a whirl, or a loop? All right, the opposed bifurcation, uh, just look for a spot of bifurcation. The spur, we're going to change spur, and let's instead go with a, um, what do I want? let's just go with a short ridge. All right, so we won't worry about that. Find another short ridge there, and then uh, identify the type of print. So this change will not be reflected on your papers. Please make that change when you get to that. All right, and then here, just find eight characteristics. So you're just doing the labeling. All right, finding eight, eight minutia. All right, so that's going to be activity 6-5. Then you're going to work on activity 6-6. Six, six. You're going to work with somebody else on this, but you each need to have your own paper. 6-6 uh, six, six is going to look like this. All right, you're going to go through, and first you need to identify the some of the minutia on each of these. So circle minutia on both the crime scene and the suspect prints, identify the patterns as well and perform a, a ridge count. Don't worry about the perform a ridge count. You don't have to do this piece. Just act like that part's not there. All right, so identify some of the, circle some of the minutiae. So identify, remember, it's always supposed to be 8 to 16 pieces. And then identify the type of print that you're seeing and which suspect this crime scene print matches. And you have some more suspects on the back. Let's do this. Why don't you go ahead and just identify which suspect that matches or suspects and those will be the only ones that you need to identify. So identify your minutia on this one. You only need to do the minutia if the suspect matches the crime scene print. All right, so there's that one. Then you're going to do the A to Z activity. The A to Z activity, I'm going to admit, is, is pretty difficult, um, but I want you to give it a shot. What you have here is you have a bunch of uh, latent prints that have been pulled. And your job is to match latent prints with one another. So you're going to go through and try to identify which of these prints does A match with, which does X match with, which does E match with. I'm going to give you several hints. Hint number one is that A matches Z. So on your paper right here, and you're going to see this on the one that you already have, you're going to write the letter Z, and then next to Z, you're going to write the letter A. Next to the handout that you're getting will already have that done for you. Additionally, a couple hints. There are seven prints that do not have matches. So there's seven prints you can ignore. Don't worry about those ones, uh, um, but you won't know which they are until pretty much when you're finished. There are three pin prints that are triplicates. So you will have three matches, or you'll have one print in three different spots. So be aware of that. Seven won't have matches. There's going to be one set of triple match. All right, so you may work with one other person. There's only enough papers for one per pair, so you may work with somebody else on that, and you only need one paper for the two of you. The last thing I'm going to ask you to work on is, once you get those finished, you can work on identifying at least eight minutia points 
on five of your fingerprints from your practice card. I don't want you guys to do anything to your, your normal card because that one I want you to be able to keep for your own purposes. We're going to mark up the practice ones a little bit over the next couple of days. So you can start identifying eight different minutiae from your fingerprints from yesterday. And, and if you want to, you can start classifying the different types of prints that you found on your hand, even though I know a lot of you started doing that yesterday uh, as we were going through this. All right, that should be a lot of work that's going to keep you busy. I, I'm hoping your goal should be to get at least numbers 1, 2, and 3 done. Number 4, uh, if you don't get all the way through number 4, I'm not going to hold that against you, but uh, I think you should be able to at least get started on this one. All right, I'm sorry that I'm not here with you guys here today, and I look forward to being back on Friday. And Friday we'll start looking at what are some of the other classification systems that we, they use. We'll talk about the, the Henry classification system, and then we'll start getting into how they lift prints and um, how to collect latent prints, and that will lead us into the activities that we'll be doing next week, Monday and Tuesday. Have a good day, and like I said, I look forward to seeing you guys on Friday.